Hi beautiful people, this is yours truly Christine with Exhibit Africa Inc. I'm back once again to share with you some fun facts about another beautiful country from the continent of Africa and the country we're going to be covering today is Liberia. Uh, I want to thank you for your previous support, uh, for the likes, comments and uh, I would uh, uh, kindly request that if you've missed our previous uh, series please uh, check back on my pre previous posts or you can uh, uh, get the full videos on the YouTube channel okay so let's get started with uh, Liberia I hope you're comfortable I hope you're ready let's get started okay so the culture name is Liberia let's get some orientation about Liberia. Liberia lies on the west coast of Africa. The name comes from the English word liberty and refers to the nation's origin as a colony of free blacks repatriated to Africa from the United States in the early 19th century. Although the settlers and their descendants are known as Ameri American Liberians defined the boundaries of the nation state made English the official language and dominated the government and the economy for almost 100 years. They, nev they have never constituted as much as 5% of the population. The remaining people belong to the 16 broadly defined ethno ethnolinguistic groups of the Niger-Congo family. The male from West Atlantic group consists of the Gola and the Kisi who were believed to be the oldest inhabitants. The Mande group, made of the Mandingo, Vai, Gabi, Kapele, Loma, Mende, Gio, and Mano people, is believed to have entered the area from the northern savannas in the 15th century. The southern and eastern areas are inhabited by people who speak core languages. The Basa, Dei, Grebo, Kru, Bele, uh, Kua, and Gebe are linguistically related to the people of the Niger Delta far to the east. Although these groups are present in the territory, when the American settlers arrived in 1822, uh, although Liberia has been independent since 1847 making it the oldest republic in africa most of its citizens have never felt allegiance to the nation state with most government institutions concentrated in coastal cities many inhabitants of the interior had little sense of being liberian until the second half of the 20th century now let's go to the location and geography of uh, liberia Liberia lies on the western bulge of Africa. About half of the country is covered by primary tropical rainforest containing valuable hardwoods. A monsoon climate of alternating wet and dry seasons characterize, characterizes the weather. Plateaus and mountain ranges in the northern region are rich in iron, iron ore, gold and diamonds. The Atlantic coast of 353 miles has no natural deep water harbors and is pounded by heavy surf. The capital Monrovia was named was na was named for the United States president James Monroe and is situated near the original landing site of the American of the American settlers. The area had been known as the Grain Salt in reference to the Malga in, in reference to the Malagueta pepper that was the primary export. Negotiations with the Basa and Day to purchase land for the settlers apparently were carried out at gunpoint and the indigenous people probably believed they were entering into a trade agreement with the newcomers rather than giving up ownership of their territory. The rest of the country was acquired through similar purchases conquests and negotiations with British and French colonizers. Let's look at the demography. The population is 
uh, about uh, 2 million 2.8 million now this is that uh, this is as of 1994 uh, this could have uh, definitely this has either gone up or down as we speak but uh, please uh, feel free to share if you have any updated information a disastrous uh, civil war from late 1989 to 1997 is believed to have cost at least 20,000 lives and many Liberians li lived as refugees in neighboring countries and elsewhere in the world. The relative distribution of the population among the, six the 16 recognized ethnic groups uh, has remained relatively constant. The, the, the Kapele are the largest with 20% of the population, followed by the Basa with 14%, all the other groups uh, number less than 10% of the total. Let's look at the linguistic affiliate, affiliation. The official language is English, which is used for instruction in all public admission schools and in university education. A significant po portion of the population is bilingual and is often co competent in several indigenous languages as well as English. Those in the regions bordering Ivory Coast and Guinea are often conversational in France, in French. The English, uh, the English spoken in most common informal settings is Liberian English as a, cre a Creole form. Educated people frequently switch between the Creole form and more standard English promoted by schools. Men tend to have more facility with both standard and Creole English than, we, than women do, reflecting men's greater access to formal education and urban, um, uh, urban malls. Let's look at the symbolism. The official national symbolism, such as the official language, reflect the American origin of the nation state. The flag is a replica of the American flag, but with a single large white star on a blue field representing Liberia's long history as the Lone Star, the only independent republic in Africa during the colonial period. The Great Seal depicts a sailing ship like that which carried the American settlers to Africa. A palm tree and a plow and axe with the motto, The Love of Liberty brought us here. Let's go to the history and ethnic uh, relations. The nation's origin as a nation state lies in a paradox of United States history. Even, even before the end of the war for American independence, public figures such as Thomas Jefferson was concerned about the status of the free people of African descent and their integra integration into a free society. The American, the American Colonization Society, ACS, de dedicated to the, to the resettlement of free people of color outside the United States, was founded in 1816. The society used private funds donated by wealthy white contributors to purchase land in West Africa and recruit African, set uh, African American settlers the first group of whom arrived in 1822. Most of the earliest immigrants had been born free. They were relatively well-educated and belonged to an emerging class of free black professionals and businessmen. Although white administrators appointed by the uh, society governed the colony in the early years. In 1847, the settlers declared independence and became the first sovereign black Republic in Africa. Let's look at the national identity. The first settlers were augmented by recently uh, manumitted slaves from the United States and recaptured Africans, all Congos, taken from the smugglers after the slave trade was abolished in 1808. Over time, these uh, disparate groups merged to become more American, Amer Americo. Liberians. The early history of the Republic was characterized by struggles between political parties representing mulattoes or light-skinned upper-class upper businessmen and merchant princes and true blacks. 
uh, who were the poor ex ex slaves and re captives. In 1877, the True Wing Party, the True Wing Party, identified with the blacks and with the agriculture rather than the trading interests, came to power. The party remained dominant for almost a hundred years, making Liberia essentially a one-party state. It also created links with indigenous indigenous elites in the interior and mem and membership uh, of this of the society was uh, synonymous with the national identity for for the most of the 20th century. The lack of racial difference between the colonized and the colonizers allowed individuals to pass into the Americano Liberian group. Institutes such as adoption, wardship, informal polygamy, and apprenticeships uh, brought many indigenous children into settler homes. Within a generation, they had entered the America, the Americo Liberian group and forgotten their tribal origins. Another recognized social group, the so-called civilized natives, consisted of those who had been educated and Christianized, Christianized in mission schools while maintaining their indigenous identity. The group was often uh, was the group was often a vocal source of criticism of criticism of the settler elite. Let's look at the ethnic relations. Liberia's uh, sixteen ethno linguistic groups, although characterized as tribes, have never constituted and uh, constituted unified historically continuous political entities. In the northwest section, Mande speaking groups formed. Uh, multi-ethnic chiefdoms and confederacies that coordinated trade and welfare, especially during the period of slave trade. Although there were no pre-colonial states, the northern west, the northwestern people were united into pan-ethnic secret societies, Poro for men and Sunday for women. The linked chapter structure of Polo and Sunday lodges would in theory mobilize the entire population under the authority of the elders. Okay, uh, south and east of St. John River, uh, the Kwa speaking people who migrated from the east lived in smaller, less stratified communities. As the American Li Liberians attempted to extend their control from the coast to the interior, they created administrative units that were thought to be continuous with existing tribes. For example, Maryland County in the southwest was treated as the home of the Gribo tribe. Even though the people there did not recognize a common identity or history beyond speaking dialects of the same language. For the most of Liberia's history, the primarily meaningful division of the on the national level was between tribal majority and the settler minority with few exceptions one tribe was made one tribe made little difference in terms of life life's chances and upward mobility after the military coup in 1980 however a new tribalism a new tribalism or politically strategic ethnicity began to emerge samuel canyon do the leader of the military government and a, a crown from grand uh, Gida County systematically filled the elite military units and government positions with members of his of his ethno linguistic group. As opposition of the autocratic and resp repressive regime grew during the 1980s, it took the form of ethnically identified armed functions that attacked civilians on the basis of their presumed tribal affiliation. Western journalists attributed the violence to the ancient tribal hatreds. Even though th these ethnically identified groups had emerged only in the previous 10 years. Let's look at the urbanization, architecture, and the use of space. Before the Civil War of 1989, up, uh, 1989 to 1997, Liberia was predominantly rural with the majority of the population 
involved in substance agriculture, small-scale market production of cash crops such as rubber, sugar, palm oil, citrus fruits, all producing primary products for export such as iron ore, such as iron ore rubber and tropical hardwoods monrovia had a population of about 200,000 200,000 and other coastal cities had less than 1,000 areas of resource exploitation operated by the foreign owned concessions were the primarily population centers in the interior during the war the population of monrovia swelled to over 300 to over 300,000 as refugees attempted to escape from the fighting in the interior. While rural communities still contain examples of traditional round huts with the hatched conical roofs, most newer houses have a, have a rectangular floor plan and are roofed with sheets of cor cor corrugated zinc or tin. Water or dwarm construct dwarm construction in which lattice of sticks a lat lattice of sticks is packed with mud and covered with clay or cement is the most common building method regardless of the shape of the structure but many people aspire to a house built of cement cider blocks and may spend years acquiring the blocks rural communities have a pa uh, palaver hut an open sided roof structure that functions as a town hall for public discussions and hearing of court cases. In the cities, especially Monrovia, uh, imposing, public, uh, imposing public buildings from the pre-war uh, pre period were built mostly in the post-World War II international style, including the ex executive mans mansion, which became an armed uh, fortress during the Civil War. Houses from the 19th century are similar to the antebellum architecture of the American South and the verandas and classical columns. The Civil War reduced many buildings to ruins and left others occupied by homeless refugees. Let's look at the food and economy. Uh, the primary staple is rice. The complex carbohydrate forms the centerpiece of the meal and several uh, sources provide flavor. Meat or fish is used as a garnish or ingredient in the sauce rather than being the focus of the meal. In rural areas, people begin the day with a small meal or leftover rice or boiled cassava dipped in the sauce from the day before. Depending on the time of the year or the work schedule, the main meal may be served at midday or in the evening. Snacks of mangoes, bananas, sugar cane, coconut, fried a plantain or cassava and citrus fruits may be consumed throughout the day. In the countryside, rice is produced by a system of rain-fed uh, sweet, uh, sweet, slash and balm horticulture. Men clear an area of the forest and balm, burn the dried bush, and women and children do most of the planting, weeding, and harvesting. Rice is used ceremonially to make offerings to ancestors and the recently dead and is offered to social superiors when, when one is asking for favors or initiating a patron-client relationship. Use rights, of, use, use rights to land are acquired through patri patrilineal descent. Men and women have the right to use land claimed by their father's lineage in the vicinity of the town in which he is, he is a citizen. Because tropical soils are fragile, field, are fragile, fields must be moved every year and once harvested, allowed to rest for 7 to 12 years. The system requires a large amount of available land and low population density. Some areas have been over farmed with the resulting damage of the tropical forest ecosystem but the greatest constraint on agriculture is the shortage of labor. Let's look at um, yeah. Let's let's continue on. The system uh, the system is capable of providing for family subs subsistence, but not f 
for producing a large surplus for sale. Urban areas have been dependent on imported rice, mostly from the United States. Locally produced vegetables include eggplants, peppers, pumpkins, greens, and are sold in indoor markets. It is a sign of Western sophistication sophistication and wealth to be able to afford imported processed foods such as cornflakes, canned goods and snack goods. During the civil war, agriculture production was almost completely disrupted and the entire population was dependent on donations of food. Let's look at the economy. The pre-war economy was heavily dependent on a few primary primary products of raw materials. In 1975, 75, 75% value of exports came from iron ore alone. Iron ore and rubber together mounted to over 80%. The dependence on a few income earners left the country vulnerable, vulnerable to the worldwide economic recession in the 1970s. There was almost no growth in the annual value of the economy between 1976 and 1980 and many workers in the mining industry lost their jobs. The economic crisis was one of the factors that led to the military coup in 1980. Let's look at the uh, social strat stratification. There is a status division between the, mi the minority claiming the, uh, claiming descent from the uh, from the American settlers and the indigenous majority. The settler group contains people at all class levels from rich to poor who continue to, main, to maintain a sense of prestige and entitlement. In the indigenous community, a distinctive a distinction between civilized and native people emerged early in the 19th century. As a result, a mission, a mission education and labor migration along the coast. Civilized qui status uh, applies facility with English and nominal allegiance to Christianity, uh, a degree of literacy and involvement with the cash rather than the substance sector. Although qui, the qui, uh, although the qui people maintain their ethnic ident identities as Gribo, Kru, Ve, or Capele, an undeniable prestige difference separates uh, them from the native neighbors and kin. Let's look at the uh, symbols of social stratification. Civilized people, especially women, are distinguished by Western style clothing, household furnishings. The association is so strong that native women are also known as Lapa women, a reference of the two pieces of cloth, lapas, that constitute native female dress. Let's look at the uh, political life. The Constitution of 1847 was uh, patterned on the American Constitution and provided for a separation of powers among the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. The legislature is a bicameral with an upper house based on equal representation of the 13 uh, counties with two senators each and a lower house based on population. The structure was retained in the revised constitution of 1986 which was intended to prevent the abuses of one party rule that had characterized most of the nation's history at the local level each country is administered by a superintendent appointed by the president and further divided into districts chiefdoms and clans the system of native administration uh, re retains much of the older system of indirect rule in which local chiefs are empowered by the central government to collect taxes and judge minor court cases. Okay, let's look at the leadership and political officers. Politics was attended toward uh, uh, was tended toward the autocratic, with the constitution more than a symbol of democracy than a guide for action. Although the elections were held regularly, the absence of opposition parties made them largely nationalistic pageants rather than expressions of people's will. The true, the true Whig uh, party's patronage system ensured that the president never faced opposition from the other branches of government, and as a result, the executive branch was overwhelmingly dominant. The, person, the personality cult around the presidency reached its height with... V with W.V.S. Uh, 
Tubman, Tubman who served from 1944 to 1971. Tubman was widely popular for creating the illusion, the illusion of broad participation in national life, but was extremely repressive. Jailing, ex executing, and exiling his opponents. This tradition of concentrated power in the hands of the president was continued in the administration of Charles Taylor, who was elected in 1997. Let's look at the social problems and control. Liberia has, Liberia has long had a system of multiple and often overlapping judicial structures, a separate judiciary and hierarchy and hierarchically arranged statutory courts was established in 1847 but rarely has been independent of the executive branch the statutory the statutory courts uh, delegated most local level social control to chief chief courts where a modified version of the native law was was codified and applied in cases ranging from divorce to petty theft. Liberians who are Muslims can settle disputes in imams' courts where judges are based in Islamic law. Individuals in search of favorable verdict have been known to try their luck in all three kinds of courts, claiming to be civilized. In the in the statutory court, native is the chief's court, and Muslim in the Islamic court. Indigenous methods of, tri of trial by ordeal have been uh, used in rural communities. Ordeals, ordeals include the testing of suspects with hot knives, hot oil, or drinking of poison in the poison cast wood. Ordeal. Suspects drink a, de decosh a decoction of tree bark. The innocent vomit the poison and live while the guilty die of its effects. The system combines the determination of guilt and the administration of punishment. The Sasswood trial was outlawed by the central government early in the 20th century and other forms of ordeal were tolerated through the 1960s. Wow. During the Civil War, all legal and social control institutions experienced complete breakdown. Random massacres were conducted by armed fighters as as young as nine years old in the service of warlords with no political agenda beyond survival and profit. In 1997, Liberia, Liberian legal institutions have been slowly reestablished, but many abuses of civil rights have continued. Wow. Let's look at the military activity. In 1990, politi politics uh, had, had been dominated by armed men. In the early years of the Republic, a former force of indigenous conscripts was used to pacify the people of the hinterland and enforce the collection of taxes and unpaid labor. In the late 1970s, the ethnic split between the, the, officer, the, offic the officer court of made up of American Liberians and the rank and file created tension with the soldiers often used as unpaid labor on farms and building projects of their superiors. The men who led the coup, which brought down the True Whig Party in 1980, were all uncommissioned soldiers of indigenous background. The first military coup provided a model for many future attempts. Master Sergeant Sam, Samuel K. Doe was threatened by ambitious young men like himself, leading him to institute increasingly repressive policies. Foreign aid from the United States, especially during Reagan's administration, took the form of vast military buildup. The lethal e equipment was rather turned against the Liberian people during the Civil War. Under the current administration, the armed forces and other security agencies continued to absorb the bulk of the national budget. Wow. According to the peace codes that led to the 1997 election, the national military was supposed to have been restructured by the West African intervention 
force ECOMOG to reflect all parties that contested the war. Once elected, however, Charles Taylor claimed his constitutional role as a commander-in-chief to essentially remark the armed forces along the lines of function. faction. The National Patriotic Front for Liberia, uh, for Liberia, tensions in the armed forces and among and among demoralized combat, re, re, which remained a, a destabilizing factor in the national life. Whoa. Let's look at the social welfare programs. Most social welfare, well, most world social, I beg your pardon, most social welfare institutions, including those of the provision of education and medical care remain in the hands of religious organizations and international aid agencies. Liberia was one of the earliest host countries of the United States United States Peace Corps. Mm. Once again, please remember, uh, this uh, might be a little bit outdated, so um, I'd really appreciate uh, any suggestions or updates with uh, what I'm sharing today. Let's move on to the non-government organization and other associations. During the worst period of civil war, uh, networks of concerned Americans and Liberians living in the, United, in the United States lobbied for protected status for refugees. Increases in humanitarian aid and diplomatic pressure to restore human rights within Liberia. A number of local organizations such as the Catholic Justice Peace Commission um, have monitored human rights issues and spoken out against repression. During the siege of Monrovia in 1990, a group called a Self Emergency Life, uh, called Special Emergency Life Program, organ Life Life Food Organized Distribution Centers for Relief Food. Let's look at the gender roles and, and uh, st uh, statuses. All the indigenous groups um, are patrilineal and have ideologies of male dominance. The 19th century domestic ideology brought with the American settlers also was highly patri 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 patriarchal. With women assigned to the roles of homemakers and nurturers of children, however, the sexual division of labor in, indigen in indigenous agriculture affords women, affords women a great deal of power, if not formal authority. Women's labor is extremely valuable, as seen in the Institute of Bride Wealth that accompanies marriage. Among civilized people of, ind of indigenous or Ameri American uh, Liberian background, Women's domestic role in caring for clothing, household decoration, and other symbolic means by which the st uh, status of the household is communicated has great importance. While it's acceptable for an educated woman to hold a white-collar job outside the house, she cannot participate in the most common activities of native women, such as farming, marketing, marketing and carrying loads of wood, and water without threatening her status. Wow. Let's look at the relative status of men and women. Indigenous constructions of gender usually emphasize the breadwinner or productive role for women and the warrior role for men. Indigenous political structures have a dual sex organization that is parallel, that is parallel systems of offices for men and women. Among the Northwestern people, this takes the form of dual organization of the Polo and Sunday sacred societies. In the South and East, female councils of elders use a series of checks and balances on official male power. On the national level, the last trans transitional leader before the 1997 election was almost the first female head of state, Ruth Sandor Perry, the presidential candidate who came in second to Charles Taylor was also a woman. Let's look at marriage, family, and kinship. Among the indigenous majority, marriage is ideally poly polygamous and patriarchal, with the bride moving to her husband's compound to live with extended family. Probably less than 30% of men actually have more than one wife at a time. And those marriages often fail because of conflicts between co-wives. Marriage is a process rather than an event. With bride wealth payments, 
made over many years and solidified by the birth of children the increasing access of the increasing access of women to cash through the marketing of foodstuffs has foodstuffs has resulted in some women freeing themselves from unwanted marriages by paying back the bride wealth bride wealth establish, establishes the right of a husband to claim any children born to his wife regardless of their biological father the great value placed on women as agriculture workers and childbearers ensures that no woman who wants a husband is without one for long. Among the civilized native and the Ameri Americo Liberian communities, sartory marriages are limited by the Christian instance on, pornogam on, pol on monogamy. Most successful men, however, have one or more country wives who have been married through bride wealth in addition to the ring wife who shares their primary resident children from secondary marriages often are raised by the father and the and his official wife and form junior lines within important families in monrovia and other coastal cities before 1980 most prominent settler families practiced formal endogamy resulting in a situation in which most important government officials were related by kinship and intermarriage. Okay, let's look at the kin groups. Among the indigenous people, groups in the northwest are organized into rank lineages of landowners, commoners, and slaves. Kinship is crucial in determining social status among these groups. The ranking of l lineages is mirrored in the Poro and, Sad and Sade societies that dictates the secrets that may be learned by initiates. Chieftaincy belongs to, the parti to particular families, although succession does not follow a strict father-to-son transition. Among the less stratified people are the southwest as the southeast kinship of the southeast kinship of I beg your pardon. Among the less stratified peoples of this of the southeast, kinship determines less in terms of individual life chances, but remains crucial in regards to citizenship, identity, and access to land. Let's look at the socialization. Children are highly valued as potential workers and supporters of their parents in old age. Babies are constantly carried, tied to the back of their mothers or another caregiver. Children take on chores at, early, at an early age and are expected to learn through observation and imitation rather than through formal verbal instruction and the asking of questions. In Poro and, in Poro and Sade Bush schools for for initiates, formal instruction in local history and genealogy is provided in addition to a specialized training in herbalism and midwifery. Former Western education institutions originated with mission schools whose primary aim was conversion to Christianity. In areas of Muslim conversion, Quranic schools offer literacy training in Arabic. Let's look at the higher education. Access to higher education at the University of Liberia was limited, especially for those of tribal background, until large numbers of the elite began taking advantage of foreign scholarships to send their children to Europe and the United States in the 1960s. Many of the current leaders, including Pre President Ch uh, Charles Taylor, received their education in the United States. Let's look at the religion. Pre-Coup pre, pre Liberia often char characterized itself as the Christian nation, but a number of shifting religious identities and practices were and are still available. Active membership in Christian denomination probably involves less than 20% of the population. 20 to 30% of the population is at least nomin 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 nominally Muslim, and the remainder practices indigenous religious systems surrounding ancestor worship and secret society membership even even in areas of widespread christian 
or Muslim conversion, indigenous institutions such as polygamy, belief in witchcraft and trial by ordeal persist. Many individuals combine elements from all these systems. Uh, funerals are very important in all religious and as elaborate as family can afford, often going on for days or weeks. Let's look at medicine and healthcare. A number of serious diseases afflict the population, including malaria, tuberculosis, and chorella. Um, health healthcare facilities generally are located in and or near major cities, and the majority of people have no access to Western medicine. There is a widespread belief that illness and death are caused by the evil intentions of other people. A great deal of effort is expanded on the local level in the hearing of witchcraft cases. Liberians, the Liberians are happy to combine Western and indigenous healthcare systems and eagerly seek access to Western drugs for the relief of symptoms and make heroic efforts to get family members to clinics and hospitals. The root cause of misfortune, however, is sought, is sought in disrupted social relations often between family members who have quarreled. Much of the medical infrastructure outside Monrovia was destroyed during the civil war and restoring at least some services remains a challenge for the new government. Let's look at the circular celebrations. Nation national holidays include July the 26th, marking the anniversary of independence, flag day, and the birthdays of important presidents such as Joseph Jenkins Roberts, the first president, and W.V.S. Tubman. After the 1980 military coup, an, an armed forces day was instituted. Images of armed soldiers were introduced as national symbol on coins, statues, and monuments. Attempts to uh, uh, attempts to supplant the earlier symbolism, including the flag and the motto, were popularly rejected. Let's look at the arts and humanities. Graphic arts Liberia has Liberia is known as the home of the classic African mask. The artistic ability of its wood covers is widely recognized. Many masks are commissioned by the Polo and Sunday societies for use in their initiation rituals. Some powerfully charged masks may be seen only by initiates, while others are used in public masquerades. The range of forms produced by carvers is impressive as is in the continu continuity of some styles over time. Other indigenous art forms include murals painted on the exterior walls, paintings, Murals painted on the exterior walls of buildings, poetry, weaving, music, and dance. A small, a small community of creative writers led by, uh, by T. Moore existed before the war. Okay, so I think we finally come to our uh, interesting facts about Liberia. These were brought to this was this was compiled by courtesy of everyculture.com if you want to check them out and it's, uh, it's been read to you by yours truly christine with exhibit africa inc please stay tuned for our next uh fun facts from another different country on the continent of africa um once again you can also uh catch the other series we started off with angola and uh, we started off with A, Angola, Algeria. Right now we're at letter L. So if you missed any uh, in, any series in between, please uh, check back on my previous post or check my YouTube channel. Thanks once again. See you on our next uh, series. On our next series. Ciao for now.